Well, for more on the problem and what can be done, I want to bring in Jennifer Turner. She's the director of the China Environment Forum at the Woodrow Wilson Center here in Washington. Jennifer, thank you for hey, joining us. Happy to be here. We heard there from our reporter, these places have popped up in Southeast Asia because China basically closed yeah. the border to imports of foreign plastics. If Malaysia does the same, won't the waste just go elsewhere? How do you address the problem regionally <laughs> or globally? Well, I think that, I mean, the one good side of China closing the doors, it was a true wake-up call. I mean, this is a $200 billion industry, and the, and the U.S. and Europe, we've been shipping our waste there for 40-some years, and now we have to kind of realize that, whoa, what are we going to do with this waste? And you're right, that if Malaysia closes the doors, it's just going to be a trickle down to other countries. But I think what's, what's good with what's happened now is that there's now starting to be a global conversation. And I think kind of adding to that has been a lot of environmental groups, also reporting National Geographic and others about how the oceans are being filled with more and more plastic waste. Now, not all of it is linked to the, to the exports that we're sending to Asia. I mean, even before that, that, that we started shifting our waste to going to Southeast Asia, I mean, these countries already have had difficulty in dealing with their own plastic production. I mean, plastic bags are ubiquitous in Thailand, Malaysia, and they haven't really had their own kind of strategies on how to deal with their own domestic plastic waste. And now we've added on top of that these exports. And those people in Ryan's report there, they got their government to act because they had drone footage of the, of the waste. Is there a role here for people power? Oh yeah, this is, this is citizen science in action where people are actually mapping out what is happening in their neighborhood. And I think that that's an, a really good model of, of that, that we could see happening if the trickle down of these waste going to other countries where the people are gonna rise up and say a solution needs to happen. Um, but it's gonna take more than just bottom up protesting and, and government bans. I mean, there, there has to be kind of a broader strategy. I mean, in ASEAN, you know, they've been discussing this last year about what they wanna do about ocean plastic, not just about the import issue and they're still studying the issue. But there has to be you know, true action happening, you know, finding solutions. I mean, there's, there's the bag bans, there's straw bans, and that's just about the consumer waste. But there's a lot of other sources of plastic that, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that each of these countries are producing. I want to talk about the managed, organized, licensed recycling and waste disposal and some of the unlicensed operations that are popping up. What's the distinction and how easy is it for these unofficial ones to just move around? I mean, I mean, who's doing business with them and, and how can they be stopped? Well, I, th I think that, that you know, again, the, the world was caught unaware when, when all of a sudden China closed the doors. And so countries, US, UK, and others, I mean, we sell our waste to some middleman and they take care of it. And, then, and, in, and, and the, what's, what's possibly a hopeful sign, I don't know if you heard that just last week that the Save Our Seas Act was signed by President Trump. It was a bipartisan initiative for to, 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 for the U.S. to kind of take a handle on not only doing research, but maybe working with partners around the world about ocean plastic problems. That's very encouraging. There's a lot of more environmental groups that are getting their voices heard, bringing people together to deal with lots of plastic waste. I mean, one issue that's, that's separate from this kind of export one, I don't know if you heard about, have you heard of ghost fishing gear? Mm -hmm. that, that it's actually one of the largest killers of, of marine life today, of just gear that gets dropped by fishers Either maybe they're illegal fishers, they drop it, it gets lost in the storm. And, and that's, it's, it's, it's a huge challenge, and it's one kind of a focal area where we're seeing the UN and NGOs and governments and, and fishing industries coming together to try to form an alliance and solve this problem. And we kind of need to see that around other plastics issues. So it's not just a Malaysia issue, it's and a global supply chain. And that seems the consequence of, of negligence. But there's also proactivity here, and everybody, of course, has trash. Nobody wants it by their house by their children, nobody right. wants it in the waters they swim yeah. in. So what is the solution here? Well, I mean, I mean, the plastic issue, think of the bathtub overflowing. We're not just gonna put towels down on the floor, we need to turn off the tap. I mean, similar to climate change, climate change is not just about changing light bulbs or having renewable energy, it's demanding really a total revamping of how we think about energy. Plastic problem is the same thing, that we have to think about how do we use less. I mean, there's, it's, it's hard to get your brain around it. So it's a good start talking about straws, plastic bags, balloons, where we as an individual can start taking steps. But, but truly, there's going to be, have to be a lot more in terms of like packaging for things that we buy. But, but coming up with, are we willing to create, you know, create the policies to create the markets to have plastic recycling? I mean, right now, it's a lot cheaper just to use 
you know, virgin, virgin petrochemicals to make plastics. I know, you know, in the US, if you're in California, it costs about 300 bucks to ship a ton off to Asia, and it's like 10 times as much to ship it to South Carolina mm -hmm. to get it processed there. So the market says, send it to Asia. And so it, we, we have to revamp the whole system. Jennifer Turner from the uh, Woodrow Wilson Center here in Washington, thank you for your insight. Thank Thanks you for so joining much. us.